summer break, we are now going to touch on the common misconceptions of breast cancer, as well as we're going to get an update from the Lions Club of Tropical Gardens as to what took place and what will be taking place for the rest of the month. Denise Brown of the Lions Club of Tropical Gardens is here with us, as well as Dr. Adelson, who's a general practitioner who's going to be touching on the myths of breast cancer. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Thanks for being here with us this morning. Denise, I'm going to start with you. Tell us a bit of an a overview as to what has happened so far this month. So far, um, well, basically we are in the last week of our campaign, and it is proven that um, the word is out based on the response to the event, um, to the walk run, um, to the um, awareness meeting where questions have been coming up, myths and all that. We have doctors there mm -hmm. who are um, addressing these, quest these questions and myths, um, such as also the physicians, um, the pharmacists and the nutritionists, they are there to address these things. We have given out 330 mm. mammogram vouchers wow. so far, and we're anticipating 200 more at the Georgetown um, awareness meeting tomorrow, and that's um, more than the usual. The usual amount is normally 200, and we're anticipating to give more. Wow. Yes. Um, so for sure there has been a, a, a a good response or a huge response yes. because of that. Yes, yes. Tell us about the events that are that are coming up. Okay, tomorrow, um, Thursday, uh, we'll be having the Georgetown Awareness Meeting, and that will be at the Mayor Miller Hall at 7.30. We have two doctors coming in um, from um, Baptist South, mm -hmm. Baptist, um, mm -hmm. and they are Dr. Gatsby, Mm -hmm. and Dr. Gerhard Papillon, they will be there to address the attendees. All right, all right, well, I'm going to move to Dr. Adelson now, who's going to tell us all about the myths it with breast cancer. I'd like to first just start with um, who, 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 is there any kind of discrimination as it pertains to that? No, I think it's very important to say at the outset, um, first of all, Lion Denise has mentioned the uh, mammogram, free mammogram. What a wonderful resource. We live in a country here in the Cayman Islands. We are so blessed. We are offered the free mammogram. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so important that everybody out there takes advantage of the mammogram. Um, one of the myths is I'm too young to have a mammogram. Um, I'm only in my 20s and 30s. That's true to a certain extent. However, with a family history, one's got to be much more vigilant. Um, the main myths out there are that one, men don't get breast cancer. Right. They do. Men should be vigilant. It's rare, much rarer than women, but men do get breast cancer. So men should be vigilant and examine their breasts. And while we're on it, men should examine their testicles, have their prostate examined, and their colon examined for cancer. Mm -hmm. The next myth out there is all the stuff you read on the internet. For instance, for a while there's been a circulating email about deodorant causing breast cancer. One's got to be very careful about what you read on the internet. You know, again, we're blessed with the resources on this island. We have the Cancer Society, we have Lions of Tropical Garden mm -hmm. who offer all this information. Healthcare providers are the people to go to. If there's any question or you read about something or you get told something that you're not sure about, please use your healthcare provider, the Cancer Society or any other resource. In other words, don't panic. Exactly. Speak to a professional. Exactly. Um, a, a myth about breast cancer, the breast implants. More and more women are having breast implants. In fact, breast implants pick up the, the detection rate in breast cancer is much higher in women with breast implants because the breast implants are below the breast tissue. And so a mammogram will actually show um, the cancer much more easily in a breast implanted mm -hmm. woman. Um, the other myths, these are myths about breast cancer. We do know that there are certain factors that predispose women to breast cancer. Obesity is a big one, mm -hmm. alcohol, lack of exercise. Obviously, we talked about family history, but Again, no need to panic if you fall into those categories of being overweight or excessive alcohol. There are uh, annual breast examinations are critical. I can't emphasize that enough. People say, oh, well, you know, I've been going five or ten years and I've never picked up a breast lump. It doesn't mean that you mustn't be vigilant. And speaking of mammograms, they are quite painful, and sometimes they deter people from, from wanting to, to go and get them done. What would you say to people? Unfortunately, we still do not have a yet enough of a sophisticated me method of doing mammography. There are new machines called stereographic mam mammograms, 
where the woman actually lies on a table and her breasts fall into two cups and the camera rotates around the breast without mm. squashing them. But until those are e readily available and they're very expensive, the benefits of having a mammogram and the discomfort far outweigh the risks and the discomfort. It is a few minutes of pain and discomfort and it's very difficult to explain to a male doctor mm -hmm. how painful a mammogram is. But quite honestly, the discomfort is worth it, it really is. The detection rate with mammography is so good that um, one can't really justify not having a mammogram. Now we also talk, touched on uh, a family history. Um, there's a lot of us who, who have one or two family members. With, with myself, I've had one family member. She's a great grand aunt of mine, or grand aunt of mine. Um, what are the chances? Truth be known, genetic factors, family history only play a 20% role in developing breast cancer. Now I say only, and I don't mean to minimize that, but there are many other factors. Mm -hmm. However, if there's a strong family history and we look to the maternal side of the family more, a mother, an aunt, a sister, a grand aunt, it does increase the risk and those people should be much more vigilant. Um, we sometimes start mammography much earlier and we can touch on that at the, the appropriate age to have mammograms. Mm -hmm. But if there's a strong family history, there is that 20% influence and therefore people with a family his history should be much more vigilant. For sure. Also, when it comes to people who have been diagnosed with breast cancer, what are the changes they should make as it pertains to their diet, their, their uh, you know, physical um, workouts and such like that? Yeah. You know, you brought up a very important point. Breast cancer, mo if detected early, is a curable disease. It's no longer a death sentence. And so people, I think, um, the mental approach to having breast cancer or having been diagnosed with breast cancer is so important. And that has a knock-on effect in terms of taking care of your health, taking care of your diet, exercising. We do know that there are certain genes and receptors that turn on to fight cancer and a positive lifestyle, a positive outlook really does turn on those receptors that help keep the cancer at bay and stop a, a recurrence. Mm -hmm. I mentioned while before we were on the air of this new enzyme called PARP, P-A-A-R-P, mm -hmm. which has become a really hot topic medically. We believe that within every cell of the body there's an enzyme that fights cancer and we're all exposed to cancer every day of our lives and the success in fighting off this cancer is related to this PARP enzyme. Mm -hmm. We believe that women uh, and people who develop cancer, for some reason that enzyme is switched off. And the latest re research shows that if we can identify, especially in women who are at high risk because of a family history or other factors, if we can identify that PARP enzyme and see that it's been turned off, by turning it on medically, we can help fight breast cancer. Now also, uh, just to close a bit, uh, we, we did discuss the age. Um, should, should people who are younger, because we, we, we've been finding out that you know a lot of younger ladies and gentlemen have been diagnosed with breast cancer, should they start checking earlier? As well as, um, sh what about people who are, are in remission right now? What should they do? Yeah. Well, first of all, the guidelines from the American, Canadian, and British Gynecological Society still recommend 40 as the baseline to have a mammogram. We uh, obviously, uh, those change from, from decade to decade. We still believe that the yield rate in women under 40 is low unless there is a family history, unless there has been a previous suspicious breast lump. So still 40 is our guideline, um, but there are obviously a certain reason for doing mammograms earlier. But self-breast examination is important. From the moment that a woman develops breast and understands about the risks of breast cancer, young girls, teenagers, young women in their 20s and 30s should be doing self-breast examination every month. All right, and of course, people with, uh, who, who are in remission right now should still continue Absolutely to... Absolutely, it's critical. All right. All right, well, thank you very much for being You're with welcome. us on the show and, and giving us all the vital information about breast cancer. Thank you. All right, well, don't go away. More Daybreak to come.